with the rib, the real Dick James. Let's get into it. So tell me how you came up with the name. Rest in peace to my older brother, who was a major influence on me. Um, his name was Lester, and they called him Dick. And when I was in junior high school, I was a lot like him in sports and things of that nature. So they called me Lil Dick. So I just added the name, our last name, because as a grown man, the name Lil Dick just doesn't work. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and, that, and that's where it came from. You know? Okay. But you, it stuck with you, though, right? Yes, it did. I couldn't shake it, you know? And today I appreciate, you know? Right. So then that's how you hip, you hopped onto the music train ultimately with that name. So tell me how you got into the music industry. <sighs> kind of was born into the music industry. I didn't ask to be a part of that. Um, but when I identified with it, what I did was I took it and I made an advantage out of the opportunities. Like 2002, was when the real opportunity came and I was man enough and mature enough mentally to realize the difference between being an artist and people liking you um, mm -hmm. or gassing you up versus real business opportunities, not for local people, but for people around the world to get to know you. That came through my mentor and my partner, Arnold Taylor, who today is currently the CEO of South Coast Music Group, you know, SCMG, the number one label. So um, shout out to him because he introduced me to the business as an artist. And my mind has been so far ahead of the game ever since. That was 2002. That's a long time. Like, wow. So what if you could remember your first single that you you broke out with? What what is it? What was it? I'm Dick James. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can dig it. So then yeah. what made that song so popular? Because a lot of people know who Dick James is from my time spent in the military, uh, from my time living in Mississippi as a kid, from my time living in Kentucky as a kid, and then living in the Carolinas, you know, which is central to Atlanta, um, and then the tip of the, the East Coast all the way up to New York, Boston, what have you. Just a long journey, um, been around the world, a lot of important people and relationships. So that name would make it simple. Right. You can't confuse me with anyone else. Rick James is Rick James. Rick James, you know, Rick James, okay. There he is. I, I appreciate the similarities because all it does is give me honorary mentions in places that I probably hadn't earned to be in yet. But on the flip side, um, how could you not remember meeting or hearing about Dick James. Facts. That's right. And then it's not just that. You're in media too. So you're kind of, you're like a multi-entertain, you're in multi-entertainment realm. So tell me about that. That comes from getting introduced to the business. Mm -hmm. um, once I got introduced to the real realm of the business, I realized that the business is nothing but an entry level or an introduction of different types of jobs. Right. And if you're up to the task and you're willing, then that's how you succeed because having one job in the industry, unless you're like the CEO or like some executive who has a lot of clients and a lot of budgets, I don't see how you succeed. So that, that right there is, is how that happened. Right, and that's interesting. So you have how many media hubs? I can't even count them all, but through my partner, Parental um, Advisor Media Group, we have like 250 plus radio stations. Wow. We have, we have like 25 podcasts. We have like 150 TV um, network outlets. It's just, it's a lot of different outlets. I am the CEO of the industry plug. I see you got that in the background. That's pretty fly threw me off right there. I wasn't expecting that. I appreciate that right there. Um, and we have the industry newsletter. We have the radio station WPAM, Blazing 420, Unsigned Height, which is based in Birmingham, Alabama, where we broadcast worldwide. So, wow. Yeah. That's major. So with you being a artist, do you consider yourself a rapper or artist? I'm an artist. Okay. Um, because I started out as a rapper. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, hip hop, it gave us life. Right. Those of us who didn't have the confidence to compete with those who went through chorus or grew up in the church choir, who really had time to develop themselves and rehearse as R&B or soul or gospel artists. I grew up with that, but I didn't take that route. I, uh, hip hop gave me life. Um, as we matured, I, I, I am a ladies man. Dick James is an attractive name. Then you see me, I am pretty easy on the eye. So I'm thankful for that. Thank my parents, you know, for that right there. So my thing is to go where your money and your support genuinely comes from. That's been women all my life. That's not a hard recipe. And then, you know, Tupac, rest in peace, he made that clear. Any rapper striving for major success, you're not going to find it if it's not with the ladies. Thanks. That's your biggest fan base. And speaking of your success, like you said, you've been doing this since 2002. If you could speak on one of the toughest lessons you had to learn, like that kind of almost broke you, but made you stronger, what would that be? Relationships. Mm -hmm. How sometimes they go sour. Um, or how sometimes people be hiding behind others. Mm. And they're so impressive upon you as though, oh yeah, that's my big bro, or little bro. It's like, man, every time you turn around, their attention to make an impression on how much they appreciate you, how much they love you, or this or that. But then when the real work has to be done and you really uncover the veils, it's kind of heartbreaking to see those of you or those who you believed or hoped were really for you. They really not for you. They're just enjoying the opportunities that come along with your work ethic, they're enjoying the parties or they're enjoying being liked by girls. A bunch of basic things that as a man or individual, you should have that going on, on yourself in your personal life. That's you know? right. Um, that right there is one of the toughest things. Everything else, it's not too much more or difficult than any other challenge that life will throw at you at any given time. Mm -hmm. But when you grow with people, five, 10, 15 plus years, yo, you become like family. And then when you start seeing the true actions versus overlooking things because you have been together so long, you tend to not pay attention to different things because in your mind, this is my brother, this is my sister. We have a relationship. That's right. It opens your eyes up when you have to work, when you gotta really go earn. And then if you're a team, Everybody has to fulfill those obligations. Mm -hmm. When those people don't fulfill those obligations, it's clear. You don't even have to ask questions. That's right. Crystal clear. So, and speaking of those obligations, can you name the top five who don't mind putting you in check? Don't, these are not your yes men. These are the ones that's gonna cuss you out and pull you off the cliff when you jump up and slap the fire out of somebody on national television. So who's your top five? Rest in peace to my mother. Aww. That's number one right there. Mm -hmm. um, my brother. Um, my father. Uh, my grandmother, rest in peace to her. My auntie. And then my daughter. Oh, you wow. Know? Your daughter be checking you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and mostly I keep myself checked so that someone else doesn't have to check me because I don't like being <laughs> checked. So I keep myself in check. But those people help me, you know, right. say, along the way. <laughs> Somebody say, I don't like being checked. At least you're honest. You know, yeah. you're prideful, but at the at, at the same time, you're, you're willing to be checked, you know, and that's important in your line of work for somebody to pull you to the side and say, hey, that's not the way. And I've been checked quite a few times in my line of work where, you know, I took heed to what was said. Now, it depends on how you came at me for me to take heed, but you know, every it's all love, you know, at the end of the day. So it, you have to kind of shush that ego and be willing to receive that information so you can grow whatever you got going on. 
So that's numero uno. And one, I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned is everybody in business always circle back. So, yeah. you know, be definite or absolute. If you have to burn a bridge, be absolute in burning that bridge. But otherwise, everybody circles back. So right. you, and you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Okay. So then with your relationship with Arnold Taylor, like you saw him from the beginning up until now. So how embedded are you with, um, well, it's what is it called now? It's not South Coast Music Group. It's called something else, right? Well, yeah, it's, it was South Coast Marketing Group. Mm -hmm. Now it's South Coast Music Group. Well, in addition to South Coast Marketing Group, it's South Coast Music Group, mm -hmm. SCMG, the label. SCMG. Okay, so then yeah. what role do you play now since you've been around since the evolution? Um, <clears throat> in what, two, three years ago? Mm -hmm. Five years ago, I was at South by Southwest um, doing some promotional work. We saw the baby out there. He was Black Baby Jesus then. Right. Him, his mask, said, yeah, so we didn't even realize the connection. Mm -hmm. Um, because it wasn't advertised. And me and Arnold would communicate, but it wasn't on about no artist because he didn't even form the label at the time yet. Oh, wow. He actually was in the making of um, forming the label. Mm -hmm. So two years later, Black Baby Jesus is in the media and the name change has made you know headlines and then um, SCMG. I know SCMG, but I know it as marketing media group not music group um i saw some headlines through magazine articles and then i read the name I'm like that's my boy so no, i called him up mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying right. just show appreciation to him and uh say hey bro look it's time and you you for woken a beast in me by what you've done by empowering yourself and creating Carolina's first major label. Right. Um, and, and, and then I told him what that's going to do is it's going to make me develop some artists in the deep south down there where I'm reinventing myself. And then I'm going to bring some of those artists over there to the label. Um, and that's where we're at today. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can call him up or he'll call or he'll text me or I'll inbox him or he'll inbox me. We still communicate like that. Nothing's changed with him. Interestingly, I interviewed Baby Jesus right when he was doing the name change to the baby. So this before all the tattoos, all the glitter and glam, and the person I see on TV, I'm like, well, that's not the young man that I interviewed. This is so wild because I, he was yes ma'am, no ma'am. You slapping people now, I'm confused, I'm conflicted. I can't even share the interview because I don't even know what to say anymore. But, you know, hopefully he's learned from the trials and errors that he's having to endure because that's what happens when you get to a higher level of fame. You know, right. it's gonna come. Trials and errors is gonna come. You just gotta know how to how to handle it and stay. It's, it's easier said than done. I've never been there because the Lord knows if he made me a millionaire, I'm gonna be on somebody beach turned up every day, okay? I'm not gonna behave. I'm gonna misbehave. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> with you, and like you said, you wanted to do your own label. You wanted to bring some artists to the Carolinas. So have you done that? That's what I'm in the process of doing right now. I have a couple of artists that I've been keeping under my wing, like the one the young lady that's featured on that single, All I Need, the chart talking single. That's the princess of my management label. And so, you know, my desire, my goal is maybe not necessarily SCMG, SCMG, but SCMG, Dick James, Latrice Management, or possibly in the future, SCMG South. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at, like CEO type thing. You know, I want to do a label situation. And, you know, we got that type of camaraderie, brotherhood. You know, I don't mess up budgets. That's I know how to make money. Um, and that's the goal. So if I need an investment partner, sincerely, I know that I can go to him for that. I'm just not doing that because right now I don't need that. I'm building the value. So it's like a relationship, a partnership. I'm coming to you with assets so we can become partners and we can build an empire 
outside of the dynasty that you already have going and we can make and break bread together and enhance people's lives, you know? Right. I like that you said you have a budget. Everybody's not talking budget. Everybody's talking about, okay, I know you, so how can we work together? But you said something important. So why is the budget important? Because, I mean, whether your budget is small, mediocre, or large, doesn't matter. It's all about being able to manage what you have mm -hmm. as a business. Everybody had to start from somewhere. Nobody started and just became major out the gate. Everybody was independent and collectively together, independents who do consistency, that's what makes everybody major. So it's the same scenario. You know, they're, they're private investors. They're bankers. <laughs> we're we're the uh, product, we're the CDs, we're the stock. And when we have something to offer in addition to our music or you know our product, our brand, our merchandise or whatever, it gives us a larger bargaining tool. Mm. And it shows that someone in our camp or team knows how to manage money. Facts. So this is not something you learned early. When did that light come on that you needed to manage money in order to manage the music? <clears throat> Being a hustler, you know how to manage money because you count money. Mm -hmm. So, and in order to have things, you have to manage that money. You got to save that money up. And you still have to take care of the things that are important that allow you to sleep, live, eat, come and go. You know, you have to take care of home. You know, right. those things are necessities. So anything you want outside of necessity are extra. So in order to have extra, you have to step up your hustle. You can't do that without having managing skills. And if you can't manage yourself, then you shouldn't attempt to manage someone else. So being able to manage myself allowed me the time to develop that type of mentality. Um, and then when I got introduced to the business and I was around the business, the business came hand in hand. Business does not change. There's no difference in business. It's all about what type of business you're doing and who you're doing in the business with. That's what allows you to grow. Right. I, you know, you are a very savvy businessman. Um, and I think that's a unique uh, trait to have as an artist, you know, who's been around as long as you have been around. So starting out, a little longer than 2002 like 2002 we're gonna say that <laughs> yeah. you've, seen, you've, you've experienced um hip-hop from both ends so with that what did you learn in the beginning that has served you now as far as hip-hop is concerned where hip-hop is today mm -hmm. i appreciate it so much because a lot of those roadblocks that were in the way Mm -hmm. in the original um, creation and state of hip hop, they're no longer there. Right. So that right there is growth alone. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to be forced to be a certain type or sound like someone that you're not. Right. You can be who you are. You can be like hip hop was originally when it was created. You're meant and you're supposed to be original. Mm -hmm. You can give kudos when you sample somebody's record that was created prior to you. And you do great with it because it's already proven that it's a hit record. So if you don't mess it up, you have the same um, opportunity to have a, another version of a record that was already a hit. That's right. That's what the industry is about. But the industry also has to give an artist room to develop self. That's what today's hip hop has created. It has allowed that, whether we like this or we don't like that or agree with it or not. It's a place for it, it's a market for it. And that's all that matters when it comes to a business, a brand or a product. You've got supporters. Facts, well, you gonna have supporters if you got nothing else. Um, so, and then you're saying with the roadblocks, the labels, basically, not the labels, mm -hmm. the individuals that play positions in the labels. at the labels. Mm -hmm. See, the labels were always created to do great things. Right. But we have people put in place, whether they're orchestrated to do this or they decide that this is a the route they want to take. Mm -hmm. um, because they're 
they become corrupted or they were already corrupted, but they played a role as though they weren't. Okay. When they get in these places, they get these high paying checks, you know, which creates a lifestyle that they never would have been able to create for themselves as long as they're willing to get on board and do whatever's asked for. So, just have to have a tough, a, a diligent mind and your soul has to be residual because okay. money's gonna come in abundance either way, whether it's for the better or whether you decide to shortcut, to stab people in the back, to step on some toes and just screw people around. Mm -hmm. It's plenty of money. Right. But, but the ways of going about getting the money that's where the imbalance is. Mm, right. Well, we see what Meg the Stallion is going through with that. <sighs> Still, to like every week or every month, it's like let it. I don't know if you've seen that earthquake stand up. He was like, "Let her go. She's supposed to be with the Lord. Like, let her go. <laughs> let her go. <laughs> God, dog. I mean, how can <laughs> she's supposed to be with the Lord? Let her go." <laughs> right. Leave her alone if that's what she want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because right. she decided to go along with whatever she's doing because of the things that she desired. And possibly she didn't believe that she would earn those things through her own work. Right. So she's willing to sacrifice in order to achieve something that she thinks is going to satisfy her soul. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she got to find that out on her own in her own way. That's right. That's right. So speaking of which, your new material, tell tell us about it. Like you said, you got the princess over there running it. What else do you have going on? Man, we've been winning awards. I'm on um, South Carolina Awards, Show Magazine Awards. I won uh, the Male Artist of the Year. Right. She and I won Collaboration of the Year for that single, All I Need. Um, in Dallas, Texas, the sixth annual Wild Out Radio Award Show. She and I won Best Single Collaboration for All I Need. Um, R&B Soul Effect, um, Soul Fame Awards. I won Best New Artist um, for my single Love Love featuring Big Bug. We won Single of the Year. And I'm also nominated for Internet Hustler of the Year um, in May in Biloxi for the SEA. Um, so the Entertainment Awards uh, coming up soon. So April 16th, 17th, I'm performing in the Metaverse concert, Chicago, Illinois. Um, shout out to Showtime 360. Um, we're going to be seen in Malaysia. So that's going to be a wonderful experience right there. Um, and I have some new records that I'm getting ready to drop. Um, I'm not sure when because all I need and I'm dreaming and just taking on lives of their own and man, I really want to feed the beast. You know what I mean? Um, I'm getting requests for new records, so I, I definitely have to release some new music. Maybe I'll release some new music in May. Uh, yeah, you can't like, if the pandemic taught you nothing, it's to live in the moment. You be patient with certain things, but live in the moment and strike it while the iron is hot. Your name is all over the world and independent artists don't get that recognition. So kudos to you for even touching touching that atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? But uh, what you mean, you gonna, I might. No, you gonna do it, okay? All right? <laughs> Yo, I got, got a little overzealous. I'm listening to you and I'm appreciating all the words that you say and everything you say is so true. Right, no, yeah. you, you gotta get it out there, strike it while the iron is hot and keep that train moving because you're gonna always evolve. That's the that's the, that's the path you set for yourself. That's what you've told me, that's what I've seen. So it's not a might in it. It's a, this is what we're gonna do and we're on to the next, okay? Right. I'm gonna take those words and I'm gonna roll with it and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. All right now, so when, I, when I follow you, Come May the 1st, I'm gonna get you into the 10th. You gonna get a little grace period. <laughs> because I don't have a break. I mean, every day this week, every night, two, three interviews. I mean, I'm embarking upon things that I've been asking for that I haven't done yet for myself as an artist. I've been there helping other artists, but I'm doing it now. And so I'm, but hey, I'm just ready to roll, man. And by the way, 
you're you look great. You're beautiful. You. Your smile, your energy. This is what we need. We need more of you. I'm, I promise we do. Thank yeah. you. I'm so appreciative because I'm telling you, after a certain age, we in bed at a, at a certain time. But I'm so yeah. glad that the Lord blessed me. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. you. You feel me? So, yeah. you know, great things like, no, grass don't grow under feet. So you got to keep it moving. Uh, right. <laughs> so what's your next Buzz single coming out? Very special. Very special. That's the name of it? Yes. Okay, I'm be looking for it. <laughs> Yeah. And as far as you getting a break, I know it's hard right now, but you definitely have great. Even when I laughed at your name, you didn't get upset. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> you were like on board. So, and to be exhausted moving from one business to the next, you you make you you make it seem easy. So obviously, God is giving you grace. You know, you get yeah. you get your beauty for your ashes, if that makes yeah. any sense. So. Yeah. Um, without further or ado, do you want to leave your contact information so viewers can follow you, download your music? Listen, I don't even have to turn nobody on to you. You know more people than me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You know what I'm saying? This is a platform, and that's what we're here for. So, yeah, I'll give them some information for those who have tuned in with us and spent some quality time. They want to check in and see for themselves what the hype is about. Let's make sure that they can do it. Listen, it's definitely a hype because I was going down his page and I was like, well, God, dog, what, what, what else is there? Oh, it's more. Oh, there's more. So like with him, there's always more. And then as artists, reach out to him. Like he's got his own platform. He's highlighting independent artists. Whatever you got going on, I'm pretty sure he's got the means to, to make sure you get what you need. So give them that uh, Instagram handle and Facebook and website information. Absolutely. WPAM Blazing 420 Parental Advisory with an I dot com. That's our website. That's our media group and our radio station. My Instagram and Twitter handle is the same thing. It's D A R E A L The Real Dick James. My Facebook music page is Dick James the Artist. Same thing, um, Dick James on LinkedIn. And Dick James or The Real Dick James pretty much on all your other social media platforms. So pretty easy to find. He's very easy to find because I was like, is this him? I'm not sure. Because I saw the older dude. <laughs> That's in the background. Who is that? Who are you marketing right now? Greg Paparazzi. Uh, what, is, what does that say? Greg Paparazzi. Okay. He's, so uh, he's pretty, pretty, he's a pretty big deal in Tupelo, Mississippi. The birthplace of the King, the Elvis. Um, he helps a lot of independent, upcoming artists, and he helps a lot of mom and pop urban businesses advertising and marketing. <clears throat> and he wins a lot of awards in like the Southern Conference Music Awards, and he gets Icons Awards because people just appreciate his service. And he's also a disabled veteran, oh. so he was one of the first radio stations down in Mississippi to call me up and asked me to come on and do a live interview and then book me to do a show. So I'm like, man, I got these outlets. I got to return the favors because people need to know about this guy outside of his local area because what he offers is general and people can definitely benefit from it. That's right. So we, we put together a photo shoot, you know, and I, I, I titled him the Black King, Black Elvis, because to me, that's who he is. Well, the good news is you're doing exactly what he's doing, but on a broader spectrum. So, you know, I, I love that you're kind of giving him his flowers now and making sure he gets what he needs here in the Carolinas. So good for you on that. Like, that's just a brotherhood, in my opinion. You know, right. and media, right. it's, so, it's a cutthroat, doggy dog kind of world you know what i'm saying so the fact that you don't see any competition you're like no let me help ele elevate you my king that's right my your character you know what i'm saying so yeah i could preach to you all night but we're gonna we're gonna bring you back <laughs> in may when that album drop okay <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much. You were a joy i learned so much from you like it's just uh surreal 
I, it's always an honor to interview an artist who's worth its salt. You know what I'm saying? You know, who can, who can teach me something. So if you can teach me, that means you can teach somebody else. So I appreciate, you know, your common wealth of knowledge. So thank you. I, I hop in and all black. I'm Ray and he's